Good evening. This is when you respond in kind. Good evening. Good evening and welcome to the annual University Awards Ceremony. I'm Dr. Jonathan Millen, Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences. Tonight we will recognize exceptional student achievements, both in and outside of the classroom. The UNE community consists of many different groups of people, and this event brings us all together to acknowledge the hard work and dedication of our students. Look around the room. Take a second and notice the students, the faculty, members of the professional staff, family and friends, all here to celebrate your accomplishments. I'd also like to recognize members of the UNE family who are watching these ceremonies via live stream, whether on the campus of uh, Tangier, Morocco, or checking in from home, or anywhere in between. We appreciate the role that you have played in positioning our students to succeed. We do not underestimate all that you have done to support and to encourage tonight's nominees. At UNE, we take academic excellence and student leadership very seriously. We also understand that the achievements we celebrate on campus are just the beginning, a foundation for an even greater set of accomplishments you will attain as you go out into the world. It never ceases to amaze me how transformative four years can be in the life of an undergraduate student. So often I've seen students 17 or 18 years of age arrive on campus with their whole lives ahead of them, only four years later to discover the world in which they will enter with a new set of purpose. It is important that we pause periodically to applaud their progress along this journey and to let them know that their hard work has not escaped our notice. And tonight we will do just that, and I am excited to celebrate alongside of you. I would now like to introduce to you UNE's Provost and Senior Vice President for Academic Affairs, Dr. Gwendolyn Mahan. Thank you so much, Dean Millen. It is such a pleasure to see so many of our UNE students, faculty, and professional staff, families and friends joining together to recognize the hard work and dedication of our amazing students. Before I direct a few words of admiration to our nominees, I would also like to extend my thanks to the members of our faculty and professional staff who have worked so diligently to organize this event. Thank you all for your efforts to ensure our brightest stars get their due. Indeed, we have a constellation of superstars here at UNE on our faculty, among our professional staff, and throughout our student body. As one of the greatest joys of each academic year is, is observing the remarkable contributions so many of them make to their programs and their fields. Although we can recognize only a small, small number of these exceptional individuals tonight, please know that the contributions the rest of you make do not go unnoticed. Indeed, you energize us, you inspire us, and you brighten our days. Student nominees, the awards you'll be receiving tonight are a testament to your intelligence, passion, and commitment to excellence both on campus and off. Whether you've made your mark in the classroom, in the research lab, in one of our global education programs, as a student athlete, through community service, or in some other way, you have demonstrated your high standards. You have exemplified a commitment to learning that has no doubt inspired others. You have represented UNE exceptionally well, and you have made us all so proud. Let's give them a round of applause. I would also like to recognize the parents, the family members, and the friends joining us here tonight, either in person or online. We are so grateful for your love and support that you have provided your students on their paths at UNE. Thank you for allowing us 
the privilege of providing your student with a higher education. So big round of applause to you. Those members of our UNE faculty and professional staff here tonight deserve our appreciation too. They work so hard to challenge our students, to mentor them and support them in the classroom, in the lab, and out in the field. They provide them with a level of expertise and professionalism that goes beyond the ordinary call of duty. Thank you so much for caring about our students so much on so many levels. I know your commitment to them makes a real difference in their lives. Later tonight, we'll be presenting awards for teaching excellence, as well as faculty mentoring and advising. But truly, all our faculty members are exceptional. Please join me in thanking them. In closing, I encourage all of you to enjoy this time out we are taking to celebrate your present successes. I also invite you to keep wishing, keep working and do your best, and then to find that extra something that lets you do even more than you ever thought you could. Keep moving forward and I just know you'll reach amazing heights. Enjoy the evening and congratulations. Good evening. Thank you, Provost Mahan, for those inspiring words. Sure. My name is Jennifer Morton, and I am the Dean of the Westbrook College of Health Professions. It's a delight to be part of this ceremony that honors the hard work of students through their college experience, as well as the faculty, faculty that provide mentorship and guidance during the time the students are here. College is wonderful and also a very challenging time in one's life. However, it's been even more challenging as I did the math earlier tonight and realized that most of the students in this room were second semester freshmen when the pandemic hit. Some were second semester sophomores, but you've been through a lot and you did it. You should be very proud of yourselves. Faculty and professional staff, you did it too, so you should be very proud of yourselves. We're still doing a little bit here and there, but um, the worst of it is, is far behind us. You've all been working on your resilience without even expecting to do so. That makes the ceremony and these awards even more meaningful to all of us. You all deserve to be recognized for your hard work. At this time, I'd like to invite Amber Windler, Director of an Alumni Engagement, and St. Francis College alums, Peter Chavanel, 1965, to the podium to tell us about the Alumni Council Essay Contest. More information about this award um, can be found in your program. Thank you, Dean Morton. Uh, hello, good evening everyone. I'm thrilled to be going first, or at least um, the first of many awards to be given out tonight. Usually we're, we're in the mix somewhere in the middle, so I'm like the 12th person to say how honored I am. So hooray for me, I'm like only the third tonight to say this is a real honor. I'm Amber Windler, I am the Director of Alumni Engagement, so while everyone else is um, Wishing you kudos on all the things you've already done here. I'm really excited to get a sneak preview because I get to know all of you after you graduate. Um, the, the first thing I do is this sort of thing to get to know who you're gonna be and what part you're gonna play in the world. Um, I'm here tonight to um, give out the awards for the Alumni Council Essay Contest. Each year, um, our Alumni Council asks for um, essays to be written around a certain topic, and my friend Pete Chavanel, who's on the Alumni Council, will tell you a little bit more about this year's winners. Thank you, <clears throat> Thank you Amber. Um, the topic this year was fairly lengthy and very challenging, so I'm going to make it brief and give you a quick overview. The topic essentially asked the essayist to 
write an essay in which they speak to future scholars who will be studying the events surrounding the historic event of coronavirus as it impacted us. In their essay, they were asked to discuss what were the negative aspects that, um, that impacted them, as well as any positive impacts that came out of it. I've been on the essay committee um, for several years now, and I was astounded at the quality of the essays this year. Um, the, and I am going to take a minute to, to share with you um, the impact that it had on me. I mean, I was enlightened and encouraged, certainly, by the potential in this room, the potential of the scholars of today based on what I read in these essays. The, the negative, and these are the common negative aspects that were discussed in, in what were sometimes very highly personal essays. The lack of social interaction or isolation, depression, individual family issues, economic issues, parents losing a job, um, the uh, deaths, divorce in families. And I think above all else, I learned the term COVID senior, which refers to those students who are seniors in high school during COVID. And they missed some very important rites of passage. They missed their proms. They missed their graduation ceremonies. They missed their senior year of sports, drama, music, whatever. I mean, that is a tremendous loss. But yet, in spite of all of that, there were some positives that really are eye-opening. One, they, had, they developed greater introspection. They, they were able to strip away others' expectations of them and learn and focus upon what their expectations are for themselves. They had an increased awareness of life's ebbs and flows. I, at my age, I have a very strong awareness of such, but these students were able to develop a very perceptive understanding of those things. And then I think finally, <clears throat> a greater resilience and an enhanced appreciation of life. And I think those are just so positive and they were reflected at some point in each of the, I think, 20 some odd essays that were submitted. And I, I want to take one moment for a big round of applause, not only for the essayists, but for all of you students who have done a fantastic job in adjusting to a very challenging uh, academic environment during this coronavirus period. So give yourselves a big round of applause, please. So this year, as I say, the, the quality of the essays was incredible. I think um, in past years, sometimes there was a slight difference between the first and second place, and then a big drop off. This year, I think even the lowest scoring essay would have been a contender in prior years. So, the, uh, so we ended up, we have one first place winner, uh, we have a three-way tie for second place, a third place, and then a fourth place. And the fourth place winner is Matthew Pitsley, and he has earned an award of $1,000. Matthew, are you here? And, and Matthews was spot on, a letter to future generations on the COVID-19 pandemic high school experience. Very well done. 
Congratulations. Third place winner, Rachel Gardner, and she receives an award of $1,500. Is Rachel here? <clears throat> and second place, there was a three-way tie, and in alphabetical order, Grace Curley. Is Grace here? And her, the title of her essay was Fake It Until You Make It. And I can remember segments of it. Very well done. Well done. Thank Congratulations. You. Thank you. And each of the second place winners, by the way, will receive a, an award of $2,500. And the next second place is Lila Godreau. Lila, are you here? <clears throat> the title of Lila's essay is A Chance to Grow. And if I'm not mistaken, aren't you the marathoner? Yeah, okay. You took a great opportunity to grow. Congratulations. <laughs> and then the third... Um, Second place winner is Evelyn Moore. And Evans, <coughs> excuse me, Evelyn's essay was entitled The Reality of COVID-19. And uh, many people learned that reality. Very well done. And the first place winner is Alexa Livingston, who received a $5,000 scholarship. And the, and the title of her essay was Quarantine Glow Up. And again, as I say, each of these essays uh, just was a joy to read. When I retired as an English teacher, I thought, great, I'll never have to read any essays ever again. Congratulations. At this time, I would like to invite Sarah Gorham, Assistant Academic Director of the School of Arts and Humanities, and St. Francis College alum, Tim Lenahan, Class of 1971, to the podium to present the Hannah Fields Linehan Fine Arts Award. Good evening. On behalf of the arts program, I am delighted to be standing here with Tim Lenahan behind me and his brother Bob Lenahan, um, who are the benefactors of this new art award. Tim Lenahan is a St. Francis College alumnus from the class of 1971, and to we are here to present the winners of the first Hannah Fields Lenahan Fine Arts Award. Tim and his family created this award in honor of their mother, Hannah, who was an artist, an advocate of the arts, and, a valued, um, and valued the pursuit of artistic and creative expression in all people. Over 50 students from all majors and years submitted their artwork for consideration for this year's uh, contest, and on April 12th, over 30 of these students displayed their work in the Daniel Rippich Commons to be judged by the community. The top three students, artists, were announced that evening during a reception with Tim and his family and all the students who submitted their work. But we wanted to take this opportunity to recognize the three award-winning entries. 
So I would like them to come up as I announce them. So Ellie Tracy, class of 2026, and a major in marine science, was a third place winner and will receive a certificate of recognition along with $200 for her landscape painting. Megan Hanks, class of 2023, major in environmental science, was the second place winner and will receive a certificate of recognition and $400 for her winning photograph. And lastly, uh, William Cox, class of 2023, a double major in psychology and art and design media, was the first place winner. He will receive a certificate of recognition and $1,000 for his oil painting with figures. <laughs> and in addition, he receives the Hannah Award, which is this um, glass award, which is it has a, a, a frame that it goes on, and it'll be, it'll be engraved, and it, this will be an annual event for, um, to support the arts. We want to give a special thank you to Tim and his brother Bob and their families for their generous legacy in honor of their mother Hannah and the arts, and congratulations to all the winning artists. Hello again. Uh, I'm proud to introduce you to the range of national and inter international honor societies and organizations into which the University of New England students have been inducted. Looking at the listings in your program, you will see that our students are well represented in these organizations which select only the strongest academic performers in their respective disciplines. We are pleased to be affiliated with these societies and we are honored to know that all of our high-performing students have achieved this academic uh, honor. We have uh, societies that represent scholar-athletes, history, occupational therapy, psychology, and nursing. The names of the student inductees for all of these organizations are listed in your program, and they're impressive lists indeed. I was at the Alpha Chi ceremony on Saturday, and I recognized parents from the audience that were there. And um, congratulations to the parents as well, because it's such an honor to have a child that, that reaches these heights. I would like to ask all students who are honored members to stand and be recognized. You didn't turn the page. <laughs> I'm very pleased to introduce awards recognizing outstanding students in each of the College of Arts and Sciences academic programs. Please note that awards for undergraduate students in our Westbrook College of Health Professions programs will be announced at their baccalaureate graduation ceremony next month. At this time, I'd like to invite Sarah Gorham, Assistant Academic Director, uh, back to the podium as well as Jesse Miller, Assistant Teaching Professor, Dr. Robert Allegre, Associate Professor, and Dr. David Smith, Professor, all from the School of Arts and Humanities. They will be presenting awards for Art and Media Design, English, History, and Interdisciplinary Studies in the Humanities. I should have just stayed up here. Um, I'm very pleased to present the first outstanding student award to one of our art and design media majors. This year's recipient is a double major in both psychology and art and design media. Not surprisingly, his work is influenced by his study of psychology. He creates large-scale oil paintings with, about personal identity that explore the intersection between societal perceptions and expectation. His work is ambitious, important, and timely. 
The student who is graduating this May has already applied and been accepted to a competitive paid internship opportunity sponsored by the prestigious Lunder Foundation. This internship will bring him to the Museum of Fine Arts in Boston, Mass to teach younger aspiring artists amidst the museum's broad collection of incredible artworks. Please join me in congratulating William Cox in his success and his accomplishments. Hi there, uh, I hate microphones, uh, so sorry if this is a little awkward. Uh, so I have, uh, I'll, I'll move quickly through this, but because, this, uh, because I'm talking about two writers, uh, Beanie Lowry and uh, Peyton Sammons, I wanted to show them the multiple drafts of the sketch and notes that I've uh, kind of developed here. They, they kind of would know what I'm talking about. I'm not sure, where is Beanie, by the way? Hi, Beanie. Peyton, are you here? Oh, hey, Peyton, good to see you. Um, so uh, I want to I want to introduce and kind of celebrate and thank um, mostly a thanks to Beanie and and Peyton, um, both of both of whom are uh, advisees of mine, mentees of mine, um, and have you know had very similar uh, pathways I think uh, through UNE. Both are English majors and writing minors, which you know is really significant. Um, I'll start with Beanie. Uh, Beanie's a poet. And that's a you know full stop right there. Um, Beanie like uh, Beanie has been in so many of my classes over the years. I don't know what it is four or five. We could do the math, something like that. Um, and has always been a leader in my classroom. I, I, someone I could I could always count on to you know not just be there uh, intellectually, but as a somebody who like brings people together. Um, Beanie founded and is is president of the Creative Writing Club, um, which is a is a really significant thing, particularly here at UNE. Um, and you know, I, it's it's funny because I, I've I've been teaching at UNE a long, long time, and I've for years and years I've wanted somebody to come along and, and start this club that I needed a student. Uh, the, the kind of student that Beanie is to do, and, and Beanie did that in, not only did that, but did it in pandemic, right? Um, our first year was the 2020, something like that, yeah. Um, it has just been an outstanding leader with that club to bring so many interesting events to campus to celebrate creative writing. Um, and then, you know, the other thing I wanna say here is that I've got to enjoy Beanie as somebody who, will talk about poetry with me and has done so for four years now. So, you know. This your way of getting me off the stage? No, 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 no. Okay. We'd start the music. Okay. Hi. Is that okay? I, yay, there's Carl. Let's give Carl a round of applause. There he is. Uh, so anyway, I do, I do hate microphones. Uh, so uh, just to say that you know, I've had this four-year kind of ongoing conversation with Beanie about poetry, and that, that's really been a highlight. If there's a highlight reel, that's one of them for me. Um, now there is, now there's Peyton. Peyton is a, a writer of fiction. Peyton is a writer. Another full stop there. Um, much like Beanie, I've had Peyton in a number of classes. I don't know, f five, six classes. I think we joked about you could have minored in writing through my cl classes. Um, has always been a leader in those classrooms. Has always brought people together as somebody I know I can, I can go to to not just be there intellectually, but also to be there um, on the page as a writer. Um, Peyton has, much like Beanie, Peyton has done outstanding work in another club, um, The Bolt, um, and has been a writer and a contributor there as well throughout, uh, what is it, two years now, a year, two and a half years, something like that, um, which is another important writing piece here at UNE. Um, and then this other part, which is, again, similar, I've enjoyed 
over the last three and a half years talking about the craft of fiction with Peyton and you know, really had some of the best conversations I think I've had in the last, uh, I don't know, a couple of months as we've talked, as you've worked through that capstone. Um, and just what a tremendous, um, what a rarity, what a wonderful thing that is. Um, and so, you know, uh, I'm going to give you these awards, but I, I just want to say that um, you, you two are the reason I got into teaching. So thank you. Nice job. Hello, good evening. Uh, my name is Rob Allegre. I'm, in the, the, uh, his, I'm a historian here at UNE, and I am presenting the award for Outstanding Student for History. Uh, it is for Ryan Sears. I want to say a few words before giving it to Ryan and asking him to come up here. One, this is from all of the history faculty. Um, I happen to advise Ryan and have had Ryan in many classes, uh, so I was asked to, to come, but just to know that this is from all of us. Uh, we had a discussion about strengths of, certain, of students and whatnot. I've had Ryan uh, in class, I think, since his first semester. And I've seen him grow over the years. I've had him in classes throughout his career here at UNE. Uh, his intelligence, his open-mindedness is what struck me at first. Uh, because I teach classes that are very, uh, very unsettling. I talk about all kinds of social justice issues, and in Latin America, which people don't know a lot about coming uh, into college. And Ryan was a very open-minded individual. What I've seen through his work is a progression of an intellectual development of him becoming an intellectual. I believe he's going to go into education. So we often talk about not only history, but about teaching. Um, what I saw that first semester and continued through his years till now, and something that you don't find, you don't, you don't necessarily know what to expect, is a, an unusual amount of maturity for someone his age. And that is something that I believe is a testament to his community, to his family, to wherever he comes from, in addition to himself. There is an incredible sense of someone who is responsible. Ryan is also a member of, I believe, the National Guard. So this is someone with a great deal of discipline, and who I, as a teacher, can count on to really exemplify what it means to be a strong student. So rather than me having to just you know, go back to the syllabus, in class, Ryan has always exemplified that. And so, in sum, <laughs> uh, it's both this maturity, this responsibility, this sense of really being a solid, solid person with the academic that really made Ryan stand out. So, Ryan, I'm gonna ask you to come up and thank you so much. I'm going to have to elevate this a bit. So uh, I'm David Smith. I'm a philosopher. I teach philosophy. And I'm here to uh, give the award to Emily Birdsell for Interdisciplinary Studies in the Humanities. I'm told that Emily isn't here. But of course, that's wrong. She's simply invisible. So Emily, would you like to come up? Don't be shy. Come on. Emily is an amazing student. You know, you guys can do a deep fake or something, right? Photoshop it in or whatever. I'll leave it to the IT people. Um, here's, here's what I have to say about Emily. Um, she was in my race and racism course. And she came up to me and said, I would like to do research in the humanities. And I was kind of shocked by that because students don't say that. Humanities are kind of an ornament. Um, the stuff that really matters is the sciences, right? 
but I had a sense of Emily, and so I met with her and spoke with her, and uh, I said, okay, you can be my research assistant on a project, and it was a very good choice. She has an incredible work ethic, and um, she did some really, really useful work. We, we um, were investigating the relationship between gender and dehumanization, specifically in Nazi anti-Semitic propaganda. And she just did great stuff. Um, and I cite her quite frequently. I cite her research. She had an incredible worth, and I assume she still does, have an incredible work ethic. She's off to medical school, I gather. And she had the refreshing attitude that understanding human beings is important for a physician. So Emily, I know you're out there someplace. I give you my warmest uh, accolades. And you are so well deserving of this award. Thank you. Dr. Stephen Travis, the academic director in the School of Biological Sciences, will now present the awards for Biological Sciences, Medical Biology, Medical Sciences, and Medical Biology Pre-Physician Assistant. Uh, so we in bio Biological Sciences always have trouble choosing, and so even though there are three awards on the program, we're going to award five, so bear with me. Uh, our first Outstanding Student Award is for Biological Sciences, and it goes to Jeffrey Waters. Jeff, come on out. I'm going to sing Jeff's praises while he walks. Uh, so Jeff has been a very active and engaged citizen during his four years at UNE. He's worked as a tutor, as a resident advisor, and as a student building manager, and has volunteered to participate in numerous housing events. He's also been active on the cross-country team, with the Nutrition Club, and with the American Red Cross Club, which he's helped to organize blood drives across campus. Where Jeff has most recently ex excelled is in the lab of Dr. Eva Balog as a student researcher. Dr. Balog describes Jeff as a real powerhouse in the lab, impeccably organized and blessed with a keen sense of what's really important. She also describes him as highly creative, coming up with fascinating project ideas both by consuming the scientific literature and by trading ideas with other members of his research community. Jeff is currently engaged uh, in designing and producing insulin binding peptide and protein elements fused with elastin like polymers. Did you get that? Uh, through an NSF EPSCOR program focused on engineering novel biosensors for advanced biomanufacturing. Jeff created his first three potential insulin binding polymers in just his first six months on the job, and in recent weeks has been working on producing even more. As a result, Jeff is already a co-author on a manuscript in preparation and will likely be taking the lead on at least one additional paper. Congratulations, Jeff. All right, now I have the first of two outstanding student awards for medical biology, medical sciences. The first award goes to Marcus Costa. Marcus? So Marcus is both a medical biology major and a health medicine and society minor. And as such, he's had numerous faculty from across multiple disciplines tag him as one of the finest students they've ever had. In recognition of his academic achievements, Marcus has been inducted into the Alpha Chi Honor Society. In addition to his unwavering commitment to academics, Marcus is frequently described as being kind, thoughtful, generous, and self-effacing, in large part for the help he provides to his fellow students, having served as a biochemistry teaching assistant and as a peer tutor in eight different subjects representing some of the most challenging courses in our medical biology curriculum. 
Marcus has been a leader on many fronts, including as captain of the golf team, as a member of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee, and Student Athlete Leader Group. He's been a resident advisor for many years and has twice been nominated for RA of the Year. He's been an active member of the Pre-Dental Club, having served as both president and treasurer. In fact, all of these leadership activities earned Marcus the Barbara J. Hazard Leadership Award just this past year. Marcus has already been accepted into three dental schools, although I understand he's still trying to decide which one, or did you decide? University of Texas. University of Texas. Congratulations, Marcus. Thank you so much. All right, our second Outstanding Student Award for Medical Biology and Medical Sciences goes to Emma Ness. Emma? <laughs> Emma is a non-traditional student having come to UNE as a veteran of the Norwegian military. She stands out for her intellect, drive, kindness, and competence. Emma conducts research with Dr. Mike Berman who reports in that in her lab work, Emma is always prepared and generous in her support of others. Her project involves investigating the long-term effects of early life pain and trauma, such as that experienced by premature infants in neo neonatal intensive care units. Specifically, she's been using an animal model to test, test the hypothesis that changes in CRF-expressing cells in the central nucleus of the amygdala are responsible for the lasting effects of early life pain. That sounds complicated. Uh, it, it involves a host of highly sophisticated techniques, including neural surgery, viral gene therapy, histology, and behavioral assays. Dr. Berman describes Emma as a very quick learner, having mastered the techniques used in her research in just a few months, which has allowed her to quickly transition to a master's program, which she'll complete in just one more year at UNE. Critical to the functioning of Dr. Berman's lab, Emma has been very generous with her time by helping to maintain transgenic animal colonies, in part through ongoing genotyping activities, and also trains other undergraduates working in the lab. Congratulations, Emma. All right, two uh, outstanding student awards for medical biology pre-physician assistant. The first going to Justin Truira. Justin. <laughs> Justin's instructors here at UNI describe him as a great student, responsible, serious, a team player, and very intellectually curious. Justin is a member of the Alpha Chi Honor Society and has distinguished himself beyond his classes, for example, by writing an award-winning essay for the Alumni Council and by being singled out by President Herbert to give a special presentation at the 2022 meeting of the New England Commission of Higher Education. Justin's outstanding qualities of leadership are exemplified in his work as a tutor and student ambassador, as a resident advisor and student building manager, as a leader scholar in UNE's ULEAD program, and as an officer in several UNE organizations and clubs. Justin is already very committed to a career in healthcare. He's a licensed EMS and wilderness first aid provider, has served as an operating room technician at the local hospital in Beverly, Massachusetts for the past several years, and is on the EMT board here at UNE. Additional ways that Justin gives back to his community include volunteering at blood drives as a member of the American Red Cross Club and participating in a variety of community service activities through the Habitat for Humanity Club. Justin has been conducting microbiological research in Dr. Kristen Burkholder's lab for the past year, where he started out helping on team projects, but was recently assigned his own independent project. And I understand a presentation or a paper will be forthcoming. Congratulations, Justin. Thank you so much. All right, and our second Outstanding Student Award for Medical Biology Pre-Physician Assistant goes to Olivia McPherson. Olivia? <laughs> uh, 
Olivia has demonstrated a tremendous work ethic and commitment to learning throughout her four years at UNE, frequently demonstrating a desire to go well beyond just a cursory understanding of class material and a striking ability to synthesize information from across multiple disciplines. In fact, her academic performance has earned her membership in the Alpha Chi National Honor Society. She's also demonstrated outstanding qualities of leadership, not only in her classes, but in numerous other settings where she gives freely of her time and energy. For example, she served as a first year experienced peer mentor for several years, currently works as an emergency department technician in Bridgeton, and works here on campus as a member of the emergency medical services team. On top of all this, Olivia has served as an intern with the Maine Cancer Genomics Initiative for the past year, with responsibility for managing genomic tumor board data, conducting data analyses, developing reference documents, and planning annual meetings of the board. Olivia will be starting the physician assistant program right here at UNE over the summer. Congratulations, Olivia. Now, Dr. Charles Tilburg, Academic Director in the School of Marine and Environmental Programs, will present the awards from Aquaculture and Aquarium Science, Environmental Science, Environmental Studies, Marine Affairs, Marine Sciences, Marine Biology, Marine Sciences, Oceanography, Sustainability, and Business. All right, I feel like big responsibility. I have seven of these to do. Okay, so I, I would like to start with uh, the award for the environmental sciences is gonna go to Virginia Grace May. So Virginia is a senior in environmental sciences who will be joining the four plus one master's program next year. She's been involved in research through Tom Clack's Chestnut Restoration Project, seemingly since first stepping foot on this campus. She's one of those students who makes the most of the opportunities that UNE offers, and she's worked tirelessly towards efforts to restore the American chestnut trees to our forests. In fact, she has been referred to as the poster child for the Chestnut Project. But she downplays this role, preferring to contribute to the success of the team and the project. And in the classroom, she is truly an exceptional student. Not only is she a, a brilliant student who's achieved top grades, but she also contributes to her classes in ways that benefit her classmates. She listens to others, she uh, encourages everyone's ideas, and she works with her peers to lift everyone up. She has been in one of my classes, and while, she, while watching her debate in my class, I often sit transfixed Forgetting that I'm the instructor and I'm supposed to be giving grades, I just listen to what Virginia has to say. So with a minor in climate change studies and experience as an officer in the student organization Earth's Eco, she's gained valuable knowledge and experience that will help her to continue to contribute to making the world a better place. Virginia is the exact type of person we need to help us solve the world's most challenging environmental problems. So for all these reasons, I'm very proud to present the Outstanding Student Award for Environmental Sciences to Virginia Grace May. So the award for the Outstanding Student in Environmental Studies is Jasmine Bouchard. Over the last few years, the faculty in the Environmental Studies program have watched Jasmine grow into the type of environmental leader that the university and the world needs. She's the president of the student organization, Earth's Eco, helping to lead many events and activities from Thrift It Thursdays to hosting panel discussions on forever chemicals in Maine. She's also the co-chair of the UNE's Environmental Council, which is composed not just of students, but of faculty and professional staff from UNE's Biddeford and Portland campuses. So she's worked to make UNE a more environmentally friendly place and helps the university president assess UNE progress in greening the campus. 
In addition, she's a world traveler. Jasmine has taken advantage of opportunities to travel and learn abroad, studying in Morocco and Costa Rica, and she's volunteered for several local community organizations. She's done all of this while maintaining a very strong academic record. So consequently, I'm very happy to present the Outstanding Student Award for Environmental Studies to Jasmine Bouchard. So the next award is for the Outstanding Student in Sustainability and Business, and this goes to Kate Lenmark. So with a major in sustainability and business and a minor in climate change studies, Kate has excelled in both environmental and business classes and has become an excellent interdisciplinary problem solver. While a student at UNE, she's applied her knowledge to help a number of environmental organizations. Kate was first an intern for the Saco Watershed Collaborative. So this organization works to help protect the Saco River and its watershed from the White Mountain National Forest down to the mouth of the Saco River right here in our backyard. During her time there, she assisted in the organi organization's DEI work and social media outreach. Her experience there led her to a summer job at the Wells National Estuary Research Reserve. She worked for the Coastal, Coastal Training Program, providing science-based information, tools, and skills for better management of our coastal resources. Now, she's a serious student, but she can be silly or all business, depending on the day. And Kate has one of the most competitive streaks I have ever seen, which makes sense as she played field hockey for the Nor'easters for the last four years, earning a spot on both the National Field Hockey Coaches Association Division Three Region One First Team and the CCC Academic All Conference Team. So I'm very excited to see what Kate is going to do to help make businesses more sustainable in our future. And therefore, we are truly happy to present the Outstanding Student Award in Sustainability and Business to Kate Lindmark. Congratulations. All right, half, halfway done. So uh, the next award is for the Outstanding Student in Aquaculture and Aquarium Sciences, and this goes to Nathan Roy. So Nate has been very active in the aquaculture and aquarium science program since declaring it as his major in his first year. He gravitated toward the clownfish lab and has been a leader in the lab ever since. Nate has always had advanced problem solving skills which earned him one of the laboratory lead positions as a rising junior when he took the lead role in the systems maintenance and coral care. The summer prior to his senior year, he accepted a competitive internship with the New England Aquarium with the veterinary services section. This last year, he was not only the coach of the men's club volleyball team, but also was the co-president of the Aquatic Animal Life Support Operators Student Club. This allowed him to attend and present at their 2023 annual symposium, where he co-presented on seahorse exhibition, but he also attended workshops and net worth with professionals. He has earned a level one life support and a level one water quality certification from that organization. And he left the symposium with offers to interview with which then led to no less than four job offers. He has decided to accept one close to home working with the city of Lowell's water treatment facility. Until then, you can find him in the clownfish lab in the Gerard Marine Science Center, and he'll be happy to tell you all about all the different projects that are in there. So we're so very pleased to present the Outstanding Student Award in Aquaculture and Aquarium Sciences to Nathan Roy. So the next award is the Outstanding Student for Marine Affairs, and that goes to Jillian Ferguson. <laughs> Unfortunately, Jillian Ferguson is at her internship in California, so I'm hoping that she's at least watching this through, uh, through Facebook Live. So California native Jillian Ferguson is an exemplary student by any measure but it's her extraordinary achievements as an interdisciplinary marine affairs student that make her stand out from this year's class. She's been on the dean's list throughout her college career. She's completed her degree a semester early, 
including not one but two different minors, one in philosophy and one in marine biology. She's applied, uh, applied her broad range of skills outside the classroom, serving as a student moderator at UNE Climate Change and Planetary Health Council events, an education intern at the Marine Science Center in Redwood City, California, and her current internship at the conservation and advocacy organization Shark Stewards in Berkeley, California. Jillian exemplifies intellectual breadth, curiosity, and leadership. I know she'll be successful and the world will be a better place wherever her future takes her. So I'm pleased to present the Outstanding Student Award in Marine Affairs to Jillian Ferguson. Okay, the next award is for Outstanding Student in Marine Sciences, Marine Biology, and that goes to Brian Will. All institutions have those people who are completely indispensable, those people who generously donate their time and energy to making everything better. And Brian Will is that person for the Marine Science Center. Early on, he volunteered to help with the summer research of a fellow student looking into an alternative protein sources for fish feeds. He never looked back. Brian took on more and more responsibility, in particular in the clownfish lab and the teaching labs. He became a lead in the clownfish lab as a junior, where he was integral to the management and animal care. He became a lab teaching assistant, where he helped set up all of the aquaculture teaching labs. And this past year, he applied and was accepted to a paid internship with Maine Sea Grant in aquaculture education, where he worked with professionals to make seaweed aquaculture accessible to Maine teachers. His internship culminated in a workshop here at UNE that Brian helped host. Brian has had multiple interviews the last few weeks, but has finally accepted a position right here at UNE's Zebrafish Lab. We are so happy to present the Outstanding Student Award in Marine Sciences, Marine Biology to Brian Will. Okay, so for the final Outstanding Student Award in the School of Marine and Environmental Programs goes to Nathan Carrier. So Nate is an outstanding student in the Marine Sciences Oceanography Program who truly embodies the exploratory and interdisciplinary spirit of our field. He is a natural big thinker that regularly asks through thought-provoking questions both in, in and out of the classroom. His excitement and curiosity about the ocean are infectious, and it is impossible to leave a conversation with Nate without a smile on your face. Nate will often share oceanographic phenomena he has experienced with professors and classmates alike, such as the time he joyfully recounted a kayaking trip during which he paddled against strong wave action and the longshore drift, which I would not recommend to anyone else. We have life jackets. Okay or providing commentary on the development of his pet lobster, which he saved from Hannaford, whose name is Scoot. And in my classes, Nathan is the undefeated and untied Kahoot champion. Beyond his major, he ambitiously minored in both applied mathematics and chemistry, a rigorous academic undertaking which he accomplished with great success. I truly look forward to hearing about the oceanographic discoveries that Nate goes on to make. So I am very pleased to present the Outstanding Student Award in Marine Sciences Oceanography to Nathan Carrier. Dr. Amy DeVoo, the Academic Director in the School of Mathematical and Physical Sciences, will now present the awards for Applied Mathematics, Biochemistry, and Data Science. Good evening, everyone. The first award is for the outstanding student in Applied Mathematics, Rebecca Powers. I'm not seeing Rebecca here, so I will pause just in case. I hope you're online, Rebecca. Rebecca is a major in applied mathematics and a minor in economics. 
Whether she's doing analytical work with paper and pencil or coding complex computational routines in one of several languages, Becky's work is marked by meticulous and careful attention to de detail, something that you would want in, from any student, and she delivers. Becky has proven to be a thoughtful, dedicated, and hardworking student who has always strived for excellence. She consistently demonstrates a keen interest in the field of applied mathematics, and this has been an inspiration to many other students and faculty that has elevated the quality of her classes. She is recognized for her exceptional academic performance, work ethic, and dedication to the field. Notably, Becky's project on predicting stock prices did not yield expected results. However, the experience gained and the lessons learned were valuable. It was an excellent opportunity for Becky to put her knowledge and skills to the test, and the project allowed her to gain hands-on experience in data analysis and modeling. Please join me in acknowledging Becky Powers as the outstanding student in applied mathematics. The next award is for the outstanding student in biochemistry, and I'm going to invite Carolyn Curley to the podium so I can talk and say nice things about her. <laughs> As a biochemistry major and applied math minor, Carolyn is a conscientious, engaged student who has been the recipient of numerous athletic awards at the conference level, and academic awards, including many at UNE and a prestigious national award, the Barry Goldwater Scholarship. Her ac academic work has been steady, consistent, and high quality, which is a testament to her personal work ethic and intellect. She has presented her research on small molecule antimicrobials at two national conferences, including one by the American Chemical Society and another by the Barry Goldwater Foundation, which was an invited presentation, by the way, to a testament to Carolyn. Um, her work has been funded by the SHARE program and the Maine Space Grant program, and she has done two summers of research in, under the direction of my laboratory, which I'm very proud to call her a mentee. One of my favorite memories of Carolyn was last summer when we were enduring a series of severe rainstorms and Carolyn showed up despite the rain and leaks in the lab to complete her research of that day wearing a raincoat and rain boots and we all got a good laugh out of it. So not only is Carolyn um, highly capable, she also does everything with, with a good sense of humor and that's appreciated. Carolyn has been involved across campus as a student leader through the Dean's Leadership Council, as a student athlete, as a sassy tutor for many STEM courses, and as a learning assistant for the Organic Chemistry Lab, where her contributions have been indispensable. Carolyn approaches any problem with creativity, curiosity, and tenacity for understanding. She displays qualities of a strong leader, by taking the initiatives on projects, helping others, and following through with tasks in a timely manner, while always maintaining personal integrity and high ethical standards. I'm very proud to honor Carolyn today and know that these attributes will carry her far in life and career. Next year, Carolyn will be carrying forward with her research uh, experiences in the lab of Dr. Eva Balog, which is an NSF-funded project, where she'll be studying biopolymers and sensors. And I'm very excited to see all that Carolyn will do in the future. Please join me in honoring Carolyn for this award. The last award that I have to present this evening is to Caleb Bowles. Caleb? Caleb, I hope you're watching um, online. Caleb, as a major in data science, is being presented with the Outstanding Student Award. Our second graduate in this major, 
Caleb is a dedicated and hardworking individual who has shown immense passion and commitment to the field of data science. In the data science practicum, where he serves a consulting role with an industry partner, Caleb researched and found existing and an, an existing computational and visualization platform for use as a template. This saved a lot of work for a lot of folks, and he has also been created in finding approaches to modifying and adapting to suit the needs of the project. Additionally, in a Twitter mining project, Caleb built a dashboard that displays the results of political tweets, providing an easy to understand visualization of the data. These projects and Caleb's collective academic work are a testament to Caleb's creativity, analytical skills, and ability to apply data techniques to real world, world problems. Please join me in honoring Caleb as the outstanding student in data science. I would now like to invite Dr. John Austin, Chair of the Business Department, to present awards for Business Administration and Sport and Recreation Management. So the first award is for uh, Outstanding Student in Business Administration, and this will go to Emily Fitz. Emily, Emily also has a minor in Sociology. When the faculty got together to really kind of think about our seniors, Emily rose to the top of the list very quickly. And she rose to the top of the list really because of her uh, consistent excellence across all of her classes. There were comments from faculty that uh, suggested that perhaps Emily saw the patterns before some of the faculty saw in terms of the way things were connecting together. Uh, other faculty also noted that Emily always came prepared to class and ready to do the work, which is no small part of what we do. In my own class, Emily immediately was able to find the strong examples to illustrate her points very clearly. Uh, and there are certain students where you recognize that not just they excel as students, but if you ever needed someone that you wanted to hire to do a project, that you didn't have to worry about the quality of what they did or that they would use critical thinking well, that was Emily. In talking to Emily, one of the things that she told me was how much she loved her accounting classes. She has uh, worked part-time throughout her, her time here at UNE, and a lot of that work certainly is, is uh, extending to where she's going to be going next. Emily will be starting to work with a subsidiary of Cross Insurance located in Lewiston, with a focus on surety bonds. Uh, and I just have to give a quick shout out to the career services, because Emily told me that she uh, made that connection through uh, some meeting someone in, uh, in, at the Commons, right? Uh, that were on campus for that. So uh, please uh, join me in congratulating Emily for outstanding student in business administration. We actually have two students who are uh, to be awarded the Outstanding Student for Sport and Recreation Management. Uh, the first student I'd like to recognize is Joe Leonetti. <laughs> Joe also has a minor in Business Administration. Uh, Joe is a kicker on the UNE football team and has also been a resident assistant on campus. He received the Outstanding Future Professional award from the Maine Association of Physical Activity and Recreation this past fall. Joe has interned with the Portland Sea Dogs and this summer he will be interning with the Cincinnati Reds in their ticketing department. Joe is also, and this is a quote from one of our faculty members uh, in the uh, uh, sport and recreation management program, um, Joe is an extremely motivated student who has been taking extra classes so he can graduate a semester early. And incidentally, it is Joe's fault that we have two students to acknowledge because he's graduating early. Joe has exemplified what it means to be a UNE sport management major through his actions both as a student and out on the field. So please join me in congratulating Joe as outstanding student in sport and recreation management. Thank you. 
The other student uh, who is recognized as an outstand the outstanding senior in sport and recreation management is Austin Ouellette. Austin's unable to be here right now. Austin is also a minor in business administration. Be besides having the most excellent first name he could have, uh, he has some other things as well. So uh, a faculty member said to me, uh, Austin is a terrific student whose work is always incredibly thorough and of high quality. He contributes to a variety of class discussions and represents the program well in the field. In addition to interning at the Portland Expo, Austin has interned for the past academic year with the NBA G League's Maine Celtics. His work in the organization's corporate sponsorship efforts have been particularly valuable as he has been a part of a group approach to fill in for an executive who departed prior to the season. Overall, Austin is an outstanding student and representative of our program who has a bright future. So Austin, if you are listening to this, congratulations. And now I would like to invite Dr. Lane Clark, Chair of the Education Department, to present awards for elementary and middle school education and secondary education. And art education. We forgot art education. And art education. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to start by presenting the Outstanding Student Award for Art Education, and that goes to Vicki Collins Libby. So I'd like Vicki to kind of head up while I'm talking about her. As we all know, that starting something new is extremely hard. Now imagine that you're starting this new thing in a new state with students who are less than half your age after decades of not being in school. Vicki has done all of this and has excelled. And it's not always been an easy journey, but Vicki has done so with grace and humility. She's found ways to connect with her classmates and draw upon her experience and maturity to translate her passion in art to exciting educational opportunities for her students. We are so excited to watch Vicki make it uh, to having her own classroom and remind us that it's never too late to follow your dream. The Education Department's very proud to offer, offer to honor Vicki with this outstanding student award in art education. All right, my next award is to Jamie Loins for Outstanding Student in Elementary Middle Education. One thing that's impressed me about Jamie is her constant desire to know more and do more. Jamie's always the first to volunteer to go to a conference, take on a new task, extend her learning in different ways, stretch herself through travel, she went to Ireland with me, she's been to Cuba, and push herself to maximize learning in everything that she does. Jamie also loves to be involved. Tour guides, campus ambassadors, ed club presidents, athletics, UNE events, Jamie never hesitates to put herself out there. Jamie's not just a learner and a leader, but also passionate about helping others. Watching her interact with kids and witnessing her kindness and dedication is so inspiring. Education is proud to award Jamie the Senior Award in Elementary Education, and we're so excited that she will not be far from us next year, as she's just accepted a job as a first grade? First grade position in Biddeford. We're excited to have Jamie right next door, making a difference for children and being a role model for our future teachers. Congratulations, Jamie. And my last award, sorry, I gotta find it in my little book here. Um, oh my gosh, here it is. Um, okay, well, she's ready, Amy's ready. Amy Lemieux, come on down for the exciting, outstanding student for secondary education. Uh, education is proud to award Amy Lemieux the Secondary Education Award. Watching Amy combine her passion for marine science and agriculture with inspiring high school students, schoolers, high, high schoolers, um, has been just so wonderful to watch. Amy's always pushing herself to learn new ways to inspire students to love science. Whether it's designing engaging lessons or writing a grant to support a fish tank in her classroom, she strives to be that teacher. 
that teacher who turns kids on and gets them passionate about science. However, another strength of Amy's is her quiet maturity. She leads with respect and calmness and rarely shows when she's ruffled, which is really hard to do with a bunch of high schoolers. She approaches everything she does with integrity and high standards, and I'm so excited for the future students that Amy will inspire, and I'm glad she is part of UNE's journey. Congratulations. Thank you. And now I would like to bring Dr. Mike Berman, the Academic Director in the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences, to the podium to present awards for Animal Behavior, Applied Social and Cultural Studies, Mental Health Rehabilitation, Neuroscience, Political Science, Psychology, and Sociology. Thank you. It's a real honor to be here. I'm Mike Berman, Director of the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. Our first award for Outstanding Student in Animal Behavior goes to Jonathan Last. I can personally attest to Jonathan's excellence in the classroom, among the very best that many of us have worked with. His command of the material is far above the average undergraduate student. He asks insightful questions and often stays after class to ask follow-up questions or discuss aspects of the material beyond what is required for the course. John's work is consistently thoughtful, well-researched, and his attention to detail is obvious and appreciated by his faculty. I was pleased to learn that he's also an aspiring herpetologist with an already considerable skill set. He's worked with amphibians through Maine's Big Night, turtles through Zoo New England, salmonids through New Hampshire Fish and Game, and the Saco Salmon Restoration Alliance and Hatchery. He's cataloged remote camera images for animals for the Gap Tracks project on campus. We are so glad that Jonathan transferred to UNE and allowed us to participate in his education. Please join me in congratulating Jonathan. Our outstanding student in Applied Social and Cultural Studies goes to Shelby Khanna. I don't see Shelby here, which is a shame, because we have some really nice things to say about her. <laughs> her faculty report that she has really developed over time as a student and made strong gains in developing confidence in herself as an anthropologist. A particularly notable achievement is her work in forensic anthropology. In her capstone, she took on the responsibilities of working with real human skeletons from the medical school. This was a professional thing that real anthropologists would do, an attempt to humanize and identify their history and story. It's also really important for our community. She did this with care and respect, which led her instructors and the medical school to trust her to work independently on her analysis. She was not afraid to ask questions, which were thoughtful, and highlighted her command of the material. Shelby has been really committed to bringing humanity back to these specimens, and will be presenting her findings to the med school formally. That's quite an accomplishment. She's also sharing her work with our younger students by presenting her research in our intro classes. Those who've worked with their report, it's been a real joy to watch her excitement and confidence grow throughout this project. Please join me in congratulating Shelby. Our next award is the Mental Health Rehabilitation Certification Minor at UNE, which grants students who have completed the minor an automatic MHRTC certification in the state of Maine. This certification prepares them for entry-level mental health service jobs and competent care in health professions when helping mentally ill persons. Each year we award an outstanding student in the minor, and this year's recipient is Mackenzie Burke. Mackenzie came to UNE from Elton, New Hampshire, and is graduating this year with a BS in Applied Exercise Science with two majors, both coaching and the MHRT. In addition to being an excellent student, Mackenzie is a two-season intercollegiate athlete with positions in both the women's basketball and women's rugby teams. She was honored last year as an outstanding new professional at the Maine Health, Physical Education, Recreation, and Dance Awards, 
and has co-authored with adjunct professor Lindy Kelly a research presentation entitled The Building Blocks of Writing a Youth Strength and Conditioning Program. Mackenzie is also a member of the AES Club, the Surf Club, and the UNE Female Athlete Alliance. Next year, Mackenzie's heading to do her Doctor of Physical Therapy at Mercer University in Atlanta. And we can't wait to see what she does with her career. It's a great pleasure. We award this year's Outstanding Student in Mental Health Rehabilitation to Mackenzie Burke. Next, our outstanding student in neuroscience goes to Brooke McLaughlin. Brooke, Brooke is outstanding in the classroom, consistently among our best students. She's prepared, smart, and engaged. She adds a great deal to the atmosphere and the discussion. Her other instructors confirm that she often starts the conversation in class, which gets other students involved. She's also generous, consistently helping out her peers, especially those whose understanding may be lagging behind hers. For her capstone, her work has been writing an NIH-style grant proposal, and the report is at its exemplary. Dr. Stevenson, her instructor, says that her grant is proposed to assess the effects of exercise on neuroinflammation biomarkers in patients with traumatic brain injury. Her studies go after the mechanisms underlying TBI, which have been important in delineating new, novel, and potentially druggable targets for treatment. As a frequent grant reviewer for actual grants at NIH, he says hers would score very well, better than most of the professional grants he reviews. She's also a model UNE student, an outstanding citizen and human. She's an ambassador for UNE, giving back to the community with her work as an admissions uh, tour guide and as a resident assistant. The care with which she supports the next generation of UNE students has been obvious. She also loves UNE so much that she's staying. We're really pleased that she's in Unicom's class of 2027, and we know she'll make an outstanding medical doctor. <laughs> Please join me in congratulating Brooke McLaughlin. Congratulations. Well learned. Still more to go. Our outstanding student in political science is Jeremiah Martinez. The Political Science Factory Report has been a real pleasure to have Jeremiah as part of their program for the last four years. Jeremiah was consistently thoughtful with a genuine interest in serious political questions. His sense of humor and laid back style also make his contributions in class accessible and engaging to other students. He wrote an ambitious and successful senior thesis, making a convincing case that community-based public health initiatives can have a transform transformative effect on black communities. He further shows how these effects can radiate out in unexpected ways to affect intractable problems like police violence. This is very important work. He's also very engaged in the trial advocacy program, where his diligent preparation, impressive insight, and engaging personality allowed him to be incredibly effective, whether he's cross-examining a witness or making an opening statement. He's been a wonderful addition to the political science program, and they will miss him greatly. Congratulations, Jeremiah. Our outstanding student in psychology goes to Haley Enos. <laughs> Haley is an exceptional student in the classroom, the research arena, and UNE community. Her work in the laboratory has been notable, where she works in the reading comprehension and cognition lab with Dr. Jennifer Stiegler Belfour. She's presented this work at various conferences, most recent or she recently presented at the Eastern Psychological Association in Boston in March, and she will be presenting at the Association for Psychological Sciences in Washington, D.C. next month. She's also put her knowledge to work interning at the Waypoint Fraser Ford Child Development Center in Stanford, where she earned her BHP and Educational Technician certification. Her leadership skills on campus are evident in her involvement as an officer in the Psychi Honor Society chapter and in the Psychology Club. She's also a part of Dean Millen's Student Leadership Advisory Council, or Slackers. It's so clear she has a bright future ahead of her, and we couldn't be more thrilled to award her the Outstanding Student in Psychology Award. Congratulations, Haley.
And finally, we have our Outstanding Student in Sociology Award, which goes to Michaela Perez. It's both an honor and a pleasure of the sociology faculty uh, to award the Sociology Student of the Year to Michaela. She's a double major in both medical biology and sociology, and her work has exemplified what we want in our double majoring students. By that, what we mean is she takes what she learns in each discipline and integrates it into the other. As a sociology major, Michaela has successfully completed a wide range of sociological courses. In doing so, she has developed solid foundations in sociological methods, which she has integrated into her other coursework, both inside and outside of sociology. Among her many skills is her ability to express herself in writing. This is where she really shines. The depth and breadth of her analysis and perspective really sets her apart. She is truly a sociologist. As a person, her faculty say she's been a pleasure to work with, always in class, always on time, and always engaged. Michaela, the faculty of the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences congratulate you. We wish you well as you go forward in your medical career, and we know you will provide both quality health care and bring your sociological perspective to both your work and your life. Congratulations. Thank you. Dr. Linda Morrison, also from the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences, will now present the awards for Women's and Gender Studies, as well as the Je Jessica Cox Henderson 1866 Activism Award. What, no clapping? No. <laughs> Congratulations to all the people who've won awards so far tonight. It is my distinct pleasure to announce this year's recipient of the Outstanding Student in Women's and Gender Studies is Mia Morgan. <clears throat> now you should clap, right? Mia is graduating this year with a major in psychology and minors in Women and Gender Studies, English, and Mental Health Rehabilitation. Yep, three minors. In her time at UNE, I'm a little closer. I'm a little closer. I do this every year. Okay. I don't want to stand here by myself. In her time at UNE, Mia has been an active participant in Dr. Julie Peterson's Self and Close Relationships Lab. And in that role, she has co authored a manuscript demonstrating that people high in attachment anxiety, while generally more concerned about COVID, reduced cautiousness in romantic contexts and subsequently engaged in more risky sexual behavior. She's also worked on <clears throat> research exploring gender differences in the relationship between physical touch and sensation seeking, and curiosity and sexual exploration. Mia is also writing a research proposal in her senior seminar class on the influence of socialization on emotional expression across genders. See the theme? Gender. Mia is completing her psych internship this semester at Casco Bay High School Guidance Counseling Office, where she is a valuable team member. I just saw your eval today. It was impressive. She is currently interviewing for admission counselor positions at several universities and waiting still for that perfect offer. As an admissions ambassador and leader at UNE, Mia has clearly transferred her skill set to the job market, and I'm sure she'll pick the right fit for her. On a personal note, because you know I'm going to go there. I truly appreciate many things about you, but probably the most important thing I appreciate is that in everything you do, you're invested in making the world a better place for underserved and marginalized populations. Come a little closer. <clears throat> and you're a dedicated lifelong learner. Mia embodies what we all value in our students. She's a hard worker, a critical thinker, and someone who consistently puts knowledge into action for the betterment of others. I and we will miss you and your daily presence at UNE, but I hope you remain connected with us and the university as you move forward on your professional journey. On behalf of the Women's and Gender Studies faculty, we are honored to recognize you with the 2023 Outstanding Student Award. Thank you. Thank you for <laughs> I didn't cry. I thought that was good. <clears throat> Every
every year the Women's and Gender Studies program also makes an award for an activist on campus. Now this is not always a Women and Gender Studies minor. <clears throat> In 1886, at what was then the Westbrook Seminary and Female College, student Jessica Cox Henderson challenged the gender-based restrictions on female student behavior and organized a protest against women's students' status as second-class citizens. In that vein, the Jessica Cox Henderson Award for Activism recognizes a person or group who not only studies, but then acts on the basis of that knowledge. This year's recipient of the Jessica Cox Henderson Award is Megan Smith. Megan, better known as Drip on the rugby team. I learned the story about that today. I'm not going to say it. No. But I know why we call you Drip now. I was kind of, was kind of I feel like I'm part of the group now. Uh, she's a senior majoring in psychology and minoring in special ed. She is captain of the women's rugby team and has served this past year as the president of the Female Athlete Alliance, a student group that's been very active in programming, especially this past year. One of the things I really love about UNE women athletes is they all get along and they all support each other. And the Female Athlete Alliance is a big part of that. I don't know how many of you have ever snuck into the women's varsity locker room. I, I have. <laughs> and there's so many signs of inspiration and I'm pretty sure that the Female Athlete Alliance does that. <clears throat> they support each other. This past fall, in, co in conjunction with the Gen Action Group, the Female Athlete Alliance organized the October 14th Rally for Roe to protest the Supreme Court decision from last summer overturning Roe v. Wade. <clears throat> I was really proud to participate in that event. I'm proud of our students for organizing it. The Female Athlete Alliance has also provided women in sports trivia nights, National Women and Girls in Sports Day nights, and rallied students and faculty to attend women's sporting events on campus. And that's no small feat. <clears throat> For your embodiment of Jessica Cox Henderson's legacy and dedication to women's rights and equality, the Women and Gender Studies faculty are honored to recognize you with the 2023 Jessica Cox Henderson Award. At UNE, we are fortunate to have a community that values and nurtures excellence. Our students, faculty, members of the professional staff are all so engaged that it actually takes two events to recognize their leadership and service, the first of which took place earlier this month on Sunday, April 23rd. At that event, our undergraduate student government presented many of their awards listed in the back of your program. Some of their awards, however, will be presented tonight. First are the awards for excellence in faculty mentoring and advising. This award is presented annually to one CAS and one WCHP faculty mentor or advisor who is consistently available, supportive, and displays a genuine interest in student success. These individuals cultivate a broad network of resources, both on campus and in the larger community, and regularly identify, refer, and share resources with their students. The recipients are mindful of students' academic, personal, and professional goals, using them throughout the mentoring relationship. The awardees also encourage and respect diversity and possess knowledge and sensitivity towards others' backgrounds. I welcome Matthew McDonald, the 2022-2023 Academic Affairs Chair of the Undergraduate Student Government to the podium to present these awards. So I'm a bit taller than Dean Millens, just give me a second here. Um, I would also like to preface this by saying uh, Kelsey Cole is also with me. She is the press secretary for USG and she's going to be presenting one of these awards. I'm happy to present the Excellence in Faculty Mentoring and Advising Awards on behalf of the undergraduate student government. The advising and mentoring provided by the faculty here at UNE greatly enhance the student experience and it is an honor to be able to recognize these faculty. For the College of Arts and Sciences Award, one of the nominators wrote this. She has been working at the university for over 21 years and throughout the time has built up the aquaculture and aquarium science program. 
She teaches numerous classes with labs, as well as supervi supervisors multiple labs, including the RAS, clownfish, phytoplankton and live feeds, seahorses, aquaponics, and more. She treats every student like her own and deeply cares about them. She takes time to help plan events like Thanksgiving dinner and movie nights for her lab students, and will stop whatever she is doing to check in with a student. She makes every student feel like a priority and is a great role model in and out of the classroom. This year's award for the excellence in faculty mentoring and advising award for the College of Arts and Sciences goes to Dr. Jerry Fox, Associate Professor, Aquaculture and Aquarium Sciences Program Coordinator. Now we're on the right page. Next, I am pleased to present the award for the Westbrook College of Health Professions. One of the nominators wrote this. She has made my time so far in my program worth everything. She motivates me to push myself. She is always willing to help her students in and outside her hours of work. She does not make you feel any less and makes your small wins feel like big ones. She is so authentic and you can tell she loves her job always there for advice and is willing to help us understand topics that are outside from what she teaches. She responds to emails quickly and makes the time to see us. She has made my UNE experience and I hope that one day all her hard work and energy she puts towards us will pay off. She has been the best professor I have had throughout my entire time of being here at UNE. This year's award for the excellence in faculty mentoring and advising for the Westbrook College of Health Professions goes to Lauren Durrell, Assistant Clinical Professor in the Department of Dental Hygiene. As Dean of the College of Arts and Sciences, I am especially pleased to tell you about the Deborah J. Summers Award for Teaching Excellence. A strong faculty is the heart of a student learning experience in college. Their expertise must be ever current and their knowledge in their field unimpeachable. In teaching, however, knowledge may be the easy part. A professor must also instill passion in his or her students and reach them on many levels to inspire them to learn and to excel. Deborah Summers was such a professor. She taught in the business department and sadly died in an accident in 1997. The award named for her, created and selected by students, is given to a professor who has inspired and motivated students to realize their full potential. I welcome Matthew McDonald back to the microphone to present this award. Or not. I am not Matthew McDonald, but hello. <laughs> It is with pleasure that I get to present the Deborah J. Summers Award on behalf of the undergraduate student government. I'm especially excited to present this award to a recipient that exemplifies the qualities that made Professor Summers such an incredible inspiration to her students. Whenever someone asks me what makes UNE special, my response is always the same, the professors. UNE students get the opportunity to work with extremely dedicated, competent, and exceedingly thoughtful and inspiring professors each and every day. So, I am sure you can imagine how difficult the task of choosing this year's recipient was. This year's recipient is no stranger to making an impact on students' lives. One of her nominators set, writes, she gets nominated for this award almost every year, and it's because she truly deserves it. She cares greatly about each and every one of her students. She goes above and beyond to make sure their educational experience is their own and helps accommodate them in every way possible. She makes herself available to her students often. She is an amazing professor, mentor, and role model. It is with great pleasure that I present the 2022 Deborah J. Summers Award to Dr. Kristen Gorovan.
congratulations. And I need to interject off script at this time that I'm reading from the script, so every time I mess up, it's in black and white. I just have to say that, Shane. The time has arrived to present our university awards to undergraduate and graduate students for excellence in academics, research, leadership, and service to UNE and to their greater communities. Nominations for many of these awards are submitted by the faculty and members of the professional staff who work closely with these students in a selection committee of administrators and faculty spend hours reviewing nomination letters and student resumes to arrive at these difficult decisions. To have been nominated for any of these awards is an honor in and of itself, so congratulations to all of our nominees listed in your program. We'll begin with the Scholar Athlete Awards, and these will be presented by Heather Davis, Director of Athletics. Thank you. I'd like to start by asking Marcus, Kelsey, and Mackenzie to come join me on stage, please. Thank you. So the work of a student athlete, and I might be underestimating, but I'm going to say thousands of hours of dedication, time, hard work, and commitment to not only their own journey of excellence, but also among their teams and being leaders and role models. And it is such a pleasure for me tonight to get to honor all three of you as our Senior Scholar Athletes of the Year. This award, despite what Dean Mellon shared, simply goes to the highest GPAs of the senior student athlete class. With this class in particular, we're talking 3.9999 and up. And it's really a pleasure to honor their exceptional academic achievement, while at the same time being so proud of how they've represented the Nor'easters, not only within our community and their teams and their peers, but how they've also done so externally in competition in our state, in our region, sometimes internationally as well. And so I'm really proud and pleased and honored to recognize, well, now I need to put my glasses back on, uh, Mackenzie Burke as a women's rugby and women's basketball athlete from Applied Exercise Science, Marcus Costa, men's golfer with medical biology, pre-dental, and as we heard earlier, headed to San Antonio. Congratulations. And Kelsey Gladu with women's cross country and track as a pharmacy student. Congratulations. See, Heather wasn't listening because the mistakes are in the script. We will now move on to our Community Service Award. The Community Service Award is presented to an undergraduate student who has demonstrated exemplary commitment to service to serving others in the university or greater community. Emily Estelle, Assistant Clinical Professor of Nutrition, will present this award. Hello, hello everyone. I'm very excited to present this award to Hannah Lynch. Hannah is an exceptional nutrition student she gives 100% inside and outside of the classroom, so it was no surprise when she reached out about volunteer work she can do over the summer. I connected her with Maine Snap Ed to work with the Saco Farmers Markets to support their SNAP EBT participants and their kids' produce program. Knowing Hannah lives three hours away, I anticipated she'd volunteer once, maybe twice, and that would be it. Upon returning to school in the fall, Hannah shared that she saw the high need of the work she was doing at the market and volunteered every single Saturday of her summer. That was six hours of driving every Saturday from July to September. No one expected this of Hannah. She did it because people needed her help. It was in that moment I knew Hannah was truly exceptional. Hannah, of course, has continued to support our local community in a variety of efforts. She has been working with the Biddeford Food Pantry, volunteering, providing educational materials, and interviewing customers to learn the challenges they are facing in regards to food security. She presented these findings by herself to the Community Driven Strategies to End Hunger Committee in Biddeford. Hannah desires to be an advocate for underserved populations and give them a voice. 
She recently completed the 21-day racial equity habit building challenge and is working on cooking classes for French, Portuguese refugees at the Biddeford Adult Education Program. This summer, she hopes to work with the Hunger Coalition in Idaho to spend her summer preparing and delivering meals for students out of school. Hannah's passion for helping others amazes me. She truly embodies this award and should be an aspiration to all of us to be more generous, thoughtful, and courageous in supporting our local communities. Please join me in celebrating Hannah with this award. The Experiential Education Award was created by the Offices of Student Internships, Global Education, and Service Learning. It honors a student or students who have pursued and achieved diverse academic experiences pertinent to their liberal arts education, including internships, civic engagement, research, and global education. Cynthia Simon, Director of the College of Arts and Sciences Internship Office, will present this award. Everybody. It's my pleasure to recognize the winner of this year's Experiential Education Award. This award recognizes students who are exceptional in the diverse ways in which they approach their learning. To earn this award, one must have engaged in at least three experiential learning programs, resulting in professional preparation, global awareness, and civic engagement, and held leadership in at least one of those three. Nominees are characteristically independent, mature, resourceful, curious, and very adventurous. This year, it's an honor to give this award to somebody who is already standing up here today, Jasmine Boussard. Toward professional preparation, Jasmine interned with the UNE Office of Sustainability, and in her role, she assisted with the massive campus recycling program, promoted sustainability events, encouraged sustainable practices, maintained the beehive and campus gardens, and assisted with our greenhouse gas emissions inventory and climate action plan development. Indeed, she learned large-scale sustainability toward professional practice. Her mentor, Alethea Caridi, shared that, quote, Jasmine jumped in with both feet and proved her competency over and over. It, I couldn't be more proud and humbled to have had the opportunity to mentor her, unquote. Toward global awareness, Jasmine studied a semester abroad in Tangiers, and while in Morocco, while as enticing as it is to spend free time sightseeing and having fun, Jasmine chose to dedicate some of her time volunteering. She cared for and entertained young children and infants, homed at the La Creche Orphanage, pardon if I pronounce that wrong, and then at the American School of Tangiers, she was a student environmental and biology teacher where she assisted and even gave lectures to student classes. Civic engagement, though, is where Jasmine really shines. For the last three years, she's been a UNE Eco Rep member. She's also a standing member of the Environmental Council and this year became one of their co-chairs. Since August 22, she's been a volunteer with the Guided Undergraduate Studies Program and holds position as one of their representatives. Also for the past two years, Jasmine's been an active member of the College and Arts and Sciences Student Leadership Advisory Council, responsible for sharing feedback with the Dean about student life. And finally, over the past year and a half, Jasmine has been a member, former vice president, and is now treasurer and president of UNE's Earth's Eco. In case you missed it, that's five sustained memberships wherein she holds three leadership positions in service to our campus community's environmental progress. Jasmine has purpose, ambition, and will, and she is to be commended for her dedication to her studies, discipline, career intentions, and cause. She has proven to be a beacon of student experiential learning and the embodiment of service and leadership in the sustainability of our limited resources and fragile earth. Congratulations, Jasmine. You are ready to be the change.
The Global Education Award was created to honor any undergraduate student who has demonstrated an exemplary commitment to global citizenship by participating in UNE global education programs, such as semester or year abroad, faculty-led travel courses, volunteer programs, or internships abroad. Susan Faraday, Associate Professor in the School of Marine Environmental Programs, will announce this award. So Dean Millen read the uh, description of the award. Between the lines, I think, when the committee looks at nominees, we're really looking for students who have literally broadened their horizons by participating in travels. It's not just number of trips or experiences, it's really how transformative these experiences can be, which I think is something we can all relate to. So we had a number of really fantastic nominees. Uh, the awards committee decided to award this year's uh, Ex Global Education Award to Ariana Telsero. Come on up, Ari. It's particularly meaningful for me on behalf of the committee to get to present this award to Ari, uh, having had her in a number of classes and served as her academic advisor during her college career. Um, so as the uh, Alumni Council essay recipients and presenters talked about, it's been a challenging few years to be a student. It's been a super challenging time to travel. Uh, Ari was one of our very first students to participate in our exchange program with the Univers University of Akureyri in Iceland in the fall of 2021. And we talked about some apprehensions in engaging in this during that period of time in the world. Um, she not only went on this opportunity of a lifetime, uh, she really seized it. Uh, she completed her credit-bearing internship there, uh, really embraced her experiences, came back, participated in two more travel courses in the Galapagos and in Cuba as a student. Um, she graduated a semester early. That tends to be a theme with some of our overachievers. Uh, and the organization where she did her internship, the Icelandic Arctic Cooperation Network, was smart enough to hire her back as a communications officer. And uh, I know because I get to write glowing letters of recommendation for her that she is in the process of applying to graduate programs in international settings. So it's just a delight to be able to recognize her with this. Nominees for the Student Leader Award all demonstrate a commitment to excellence that results in positive change in the university community. They possess a balanced collegiate lifestyle and serve as role models. I now invite Mary Fraser, Director of Academic Success, to present the Student Leader Award. I am so I'm so excited. Um, I am delighted to present the Student Leader Award to Justin Truira. <laughs> Justin has proven himself an able leader in many roles on campus. Some of them have already been referenced this evening. Um, he's been a resident assistant, a leader scholar, a student building manager, an admissions ambassador, and he's been a tutor in my department for three years. I've had the pleasure to observe Justin's work as a tutor. He has repeatedly distinguished himself as a leader. He is simply a superb tutor. He is patient, he is attentive, he doesn't just provide answers, he guides tutees to discover the steps and the processes that lead to those answers. The approach can be challenging when students are frustrated and anxious, but Justin's gentle demeanor and good humor serve him really well in helping students to feel at ease and supported to overcome what they're struggling with. This kind of leadership is quietly empowering. Justin is also a leader who takes initiative. He has conducted or assisted with several large group review sessions 
He's served on SASE's advisory board, and over the last year, Justin has pursued and completed the training to be certified as a master tutor. That's the highest level of qualification you can earn as a tutor. He's applied his knowledge and experience to design and lead training for new tutors and to mentor and recommend other students to become tutors. His leadership by example raises the bar for others. It lights a path for them to follow and contributes to the success of SASE in its mission to help all students become independent and effective learners. He has similarly demonstrated the same qualities in his leadership on the RA staff and among the student building managers for the Rippage Commons. The most important qualities that contribute to Justin's success as a leader are that he is a genuinely kind and delightful person to be around. He is thoughtful, funny, considerate, and always a bright spot in my day. So congratulations, Justin. Nominees for the Susan J. Hillman Science Math Education Award show dedication to STEM education and professional promise as STEM educators. Students with formal or informal teaching experience in STEM fields are considered. The awardees should have bright intellect and be known as a role model and mentor among their peers. I'll bring Mary back to present this award. It is my pleasure to present the Susan J. Hillman Math and Science Educator Award to Noah Koch. <laughs> Noah has been an exemplary tutor in, on the SASE staff for the last three years. Because his career at UNE started on the pre-med track, Noah's content expertise includes the core math and science subjects that many students struggle with. I have frequently had the opportunity to overhear Noah's tutoring sessions for biology, organic chemistry, and psychology, and I have been consistently impressed and entertained by his creative techniques to make complex material more accessible. He tunes in to the needs of his tutees and adjusts his approach and explanations to meet students where they are. He employs great questioning techniques that encourage students to explore what they know from multiple angles. He provides them gentle guidance and reinforcement through tougher content until the students gain confidence. Noah shines in group tutoring sessions where he facilitates collaboration between tutees so that they can learn from each other. Beyond his work to support tutees, Noah is a collegial and supportive colleague with his fellow tutors. He is often found, between his appointments, talking shop with the other tutors about the topics that students are getting help with and offering tips and encouragement. He has pursued training to qualify as an advanced tutor and has served as a teaching assistant for organic chemistry. In addition to years of work with two Ts at UNE, Noah has gained a great deal of experience in classroom teaching at the elementary, middle, and high school levels. We have had many conversations about the work he has done with his kids and the challenges and delights that he's had in his classroom experiences. Frankly, any science or math classroom will be fortunate to have Noah leading it. Congratulations, Noah. <laughs> And now we move on to the undergraduate and graduate awards for research and scholarship. I'd like to invite Mike Berman back to the stage to present our undergraduate research and scholarship award in medicine or public health. Or, or I would like to invite Dr. Tom Clack, professor in the School of Env Marine Environmental Programs, to come up and present the undergraduate research and scholarship award in the natural sciences. How's that? Um, I would like to invite uh, Virginia May up to, um, for this honor. It's, it's a great achievement that I'm very happy to bestow 
I'm Virginia May, uh, um, as the, is UNE's outstanding researcher in the natural sciences. I'll be, I'll be brief. There's a lot going on in the lab, and it's, it's thanks to Virginia's work. She's ever curious. She's a tenacious researcher. There she is. She's, you've seen her before. She's up here again. Um, during the five semesters that Virginia has been part of my research team, she's worked, she has steadily risen not only to the role of student team leader, but also as an emerging scientist herself taking independent responsibility for key components of our lab and field projects. She does most of the um, work guiding our, our lab essays. I have complete confidence in the work she does and the results we achieve. Um, she's, with her tremendous contributions, our lab has made some unprecedented achievements to advance the genetically engineered chestnut a full generation in each of the last two years, and we hope again this year for a third year in a row in running. And I just want to take a moment here to give an example of the kinds of work that Virginia has contributed to. She's fastidious in the lab, um, and it's been able to yield many dozens of fertile genetically engineered chestnuts indoors. No other lab has ever been able to achieve that. It's unprecedented both in terms of the quantity of chestnuts we've been able to uh, achieve in off-season, but to breed many of them so they have inherited two copies of the blight tolerant gene. So I mentioned this homozygosity to the internet, the, really the international leader of this project who's at SUNY ESF, Dr. William Powell. And here's what he said. So far, our lab hasn't been able to germinate seeds from these small seedlings. I would like to know your technique. Well, the principal component of the UNE technique is to have Virginia relentlessly engage the project. Um, her skills in the field are as careful as they are in the lab, and I consider her a full-fledged co-author in our project. So because of many, these many accomplishments by Virginia, and there's many more to come as she begins the four plus one program, I'm very happy to have her here for another two years to further advance our, our science. I can't be more proud that she's being honored this evening as UNE's outstanding researcher in the natural sciences. <laughs> So I think we're going off script. Jenny, are you next? All right. I invite Dr. Jennifer Stiegler Balfour, Associate Professor in the School of Social and Behavioral Sciences, to now present our Undergraduate Research and Scholarship Awards in Social Sciences, Humanities, Business, or the Arts. Um, I would like to invite Emily Newborough up to the stage. All right, and while you... Emily is an excellent student in the classroom and the research arena in the Reading Comprehension and Cognition Lab, which is a part of a School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. She went from shy first-year student to accomplished scholar in the past four years, and not even a global pandemic could stop her from accomplishing the things she put her mind to. Emily is graduating in May as a co-author on a peer-reviewed publication titled is reading under print and digital conditions really higher and lower ability comprehenders, which was published last month in the International Journal of Human Computer Studies, which is a well-respected high-impact journal in psychology. Emily also has an impressive list of posters that she's presented at both regional and national conferences, and during the pandemic she even presented remotely several times. Most recently, she presented at the Eastern Psychological Association Conference in Boston in March, and she'll be headed to Washington, D.C. next month to present a new project at the Association for Psychological Sciences in Washington, D.C. Emily is an excellent scientific communicator, and I'm proud of all the growth I've seen in her in the last four years. After being accepted into several graduate programs, Emily has decided she will be attending Marymount University, where she'll be earning her dual master's degree in forensic and legal psychology and clinical mental health counseling. 
It's clear that she has a bright future ahead of her, and I couldn't be more excited to award her the Outstanding Researcher in the Social Sciences Award. Congratulations, Emily. And now I invite Dr. Mike Berman back to the podium to present our Undergraduate Research and Scholarship Award in Medicine or Public Health. So I'm really here filling in for Dr. Glenn Stevenson, who unfortunately couldn't make it. So I suppose together we're pleased to announce the winner for the Research and Scholarship Award for Medicine and Public Health goes to Hannah LaCourse. So Hannah is a graduating senior majoring in medical biology with a minor in neuroscience. She joined Dr. Stevenson's drug discovery and psychopharmacology lab as a freshman, so worked with him for all four years. She was promoted to lab manager in her junior year. And lab manager in a Stevenson lab is not a name only. Hannah directs the entire lab. She runs all the experiments, she schedules the experiments, she supervises and schedules other student researchers. She acts as a liaison between UNE collaborator labs and the College of Osteopathic Medicine, and she co-chairs weekly lab meetings. Importantly, she also provides thoughtful input on the research design for Dr. Stevenson's grant applications. This is a really impressive regimen of productivity for an undergraduate student. She's the current lead investigator on a pharmacology and medications development project in the Stevenson Lab that's a collaboration with Harvard Medical School, McLean Hospital, and the UNE College of Osteopathic Medicine. Hannah and her team are using a sophisticated mathematical pharmacology to determine the nature of in vivo receptor interactions across dyad sets of neurotransmitter receptors. She's discovered that the dopamine D1 receptor produces pain relief but also acts as an opioid sparing drug in rodent models. This reduces the side effects of opiates, like addiction, while maintaining the powerful pain relief properties. This is an incredibly exciting discovery for the fields of pain and addiction research. Congratulations, Hannah. <laughs> Wait, I'm not done yet, just congratulating her. So she's presented her work at the UNI Symposia and two national meetings, including experimental biology in Philadelphia and a national pain re research meeting at Duke University just two weeks ago. She and her co-presenter, Lily, were the only undergraduates to present at that conference, another impressive accomplishment. She's won the UNI Schur and Kahn's Summer Student Research Awards. Uh, Dr. Stevenson thanks UNI for the vitally important components of their training. Hannah is the lead author on a manuscript summarizing her data, including all the dopamine D1 receptor interaction data. This manuscript will be submitted this summer to a peer-reviewed high-impact journal and will undoubtedly be published. Dr. Stevenson was recently giving a talk and after the talk realized that Hannah knew as much as he did about the research project. He has nothing more to teach her and is therefore willing to let her go. He's going to miss her in the lab and he wishes her all the best as she goes on to graduate school and ultimately medical school. Now let's congratulate Hannah for, uh, for her outstanding researcher and scholar award. Congratulations. And now I'd like to invite Dr. John Mohan, Assistant Professor in the School of Marine Environmental Programs, to present our Graduate Research and Scholarship Award. It is my great honor to present the Outstanding Graduate Researcher Award to Benjamin Lafreniere. Ben has been conducting research in my lab since his junior year on a project that focused on vertebral chemistry of shortfin mako sharks. That undergraduate project resulted in a first author publication in the journal Marine and Coastal Fisheries and solidified Ben's commitment to conduct applied fisheries research. He thus entered the four plus one program last summer. As a graduate student with one year to complete his degree, he was pretty much unstoppable. His thesis research focused on the life history of white hake, an understudied groundfish species. 
In his first few months as a grad student, he presented a poster at the International American Fisheries Society Conference in Spokane, Washington on chemical methods of aging white hake. It was there I learned that in addition to being an excellent scientist, he was a talented disc golf player, and he managed to outscore me on the course once. <laughs> this past January, he attended the Southern New England chapter of the American Fisheries Society, where he won the best student oral presentation among the ranks of top students, a truly outstanding accomplishment. He is also a climate ambassador for the American Fisheries Society and contributes to the broad communication of climate science to the public. Two chapters of his MS thesis on White Hake are near submission to academic journals. Ben interviewed for the PhD program at Texas A&M University at Galveston, but while waiting the decision, he was offered a position with the Maine Department of Marine Resources and is already employed before even finishing his degree. Ben, I'm extremely proud of your accomplishments and outstanding research. I'm so happy you'll be staying here in Maine. I look forward to continued research collaborations and rounds on the disc golf course. Congratulations. Okay, we're entering our last category, so thanks for staying with us. We now will honor those student scholars who have excelled in their academic performance and have demonstrated a balanced commitment to their collegiate experience through their involvement in leadership and service. Would Dr. Deborah Kram Kramlick please come forward to present the next award. Good evening, everyone, and congratulations to all of our outstanding nominees and award winners this evening. It gives me great pleasure to award the Sophomore Academic Excellence Award to Aidan Jessamine. Aiden has been an exemplary nursing student since changing her major from medical biology to nursing to allow her to enter the healthcare workforce and provide hands-on care to those with the greatest need, inspired by the hospice nurses who cared for her grandparents at the end of their lives during Aiden's first semester in college. She is hoping to minor in public health and eventually become a travel nurse. Her academic achievement is impressive given her extracurricular and community involvement while enrolled in a very rigorous nursing program. She is an active member of the Student Nurses Association on the Biddeford campus. She is a member of UNE Medical Missions, Pulse, and will be going to Costa Rica in May 2023 to provide patient care at a health clinic. She is a member of the club soccer team she works as a licensed nursing assistant in New Hampshire. During summers and school breaks, she works on an adult medical surgical unit. She enjoys providing direct patient care. She became interested in oncology nursing as a result of a family member's cancer diagnosis. She and her family have for many years been involved in community service activity, Walk to End Alzheimer's, due to her grandmother's diagnosis. We are so very proud of her. She represents the future of nursing, and we know she will go on to do great things. Congratulations. And I would now like to invite Dr. Mohan back to the podium to present the award for the Junior Academic Excellence. It is my great pleasure to present the Junior Academic Excellence Award to Leo Edmondson. <laughs> Leo first approached me as an eager first year student, fascinated by sharks, like many new students. But Leo is not like most students. Since it was a pandemic, it was difficult to get a research program started, but Leo patiently persisted to get involved, and we started working with existing data sets on Pacific bluefin tuna otolith chemistry. Leo became enamored with bluefin tuna, and he took the lead on our local opportunistic tuna head collection program. Leo demonstrated a strong work ethic to get things done, including scrubbing stinky fish coolers, cleaning fish tanks, and doing weekend and holiday fish checks. Leo recognized honor in completing tasks for the common good, and that virtue deserves to be celebrated. 
Leo possess a genuine interest and commitment to help others that you just can't help but notice. Just ask faculty, staff, and grad students at the Marine Science Center. He's always there, available, and wanting to lend a hand. Leo is trustworthy, an extremely creative and talented artist, and never wants to be in the spotlight. My favorite interactions with Leo include, include sitting in my office, examining data together, formulating hypotheses, and pondering how the natural world works. We've had very memorable philosophical conversations on how science is an art, a creative outlet for ideas and hypotheses. I believe those are excellent qualities of a great scholar, and Leo has a bright future. He spent last summer as a sure student here at UNE, but this summer he'll travel to Oregon State University Hatfield Marine Science Center to expand his research portfolio in the NSF REU program and network with top professionals on the West Coast. Leo, I'm so proud of what you accomplished and look forward to our continued collaboration. Congratulations on receiving this honor. The College of Arts and Sciences Dean's Leadership Award was established to honor a CAS student who exemplifies the value of a liberal arts education by bringing together academic excellence with demonstrated applications beyond the classroom while also engaging in leadership activities in the college. This year it gives me great pleasure to present the award to Sarah Petalaro. Sarah is a senior biochemistry major with a minor in education, but I've gotten to know Sarah through her involvement in the Slackers, who you heard about tonight. That's my Student Leadership Advisory Council. Beyond her work with the Slackers, however, Sarah has been both a sassy peer tutor as well as a teacher's assistant. She also serves as the president of the Student Athlete Advisory Committee. Sarah is active in student recruitment efforts and has established herself in conducting undergraduate research with Dr. DeVu. She did all this also while being a student athlete. She was the captain of our field hockey team and was named this year's CCC Scholar Athlete of the Year. I could go on and on and on, but I think the most impressive of all her accomplishments must be when she joined me and some colleagues this year in our polar plunge. Right, Dr. Clark? She's a tremendous ambassador for UNE, and for all of these reasons, it is my great pleasure to present this year's Dean's Leadership Award to Sarah Pitalero. Our final and highest award for the evening is presented to the outstanding senior who has excelled in academic accomplishment, leadership, and citizenship. First, congratulations to all the students who are nominated for this highest honor, and invite you all to stand at this time so we can recognize you for your excellence. Dr. Kristen Burkholder, Associate Professor in the School of Biological Sciences, will now present the Jack Downs Award for Academic Excellence. Good evening. It is my pleasure and my honor to award the Jack Downs Award to a student who's not just a phenomenal member of our UNE community, but to someone who is very, very dear to me. This year's award goes to Lauren Cooper. Lauren, you can go ahead and come up. <laughs> Lauren is a graduating medical biology major. She is a stellar academic. She is an undergraduate researcher, a student leader, and she is a valuable member of the UNE community and the community at large. So academically speaking, Lauren maintained a near perfect GPA for her four years at UNE. She was named to the CAS Dean's List each semester of her enrollment. I know Lauren well because she came to me during the first semester of her freshman year asking for a research position in my microbiology research lab. At 18 years of age, Lauren was poised, she was professional, she was confident, and so I've 
course I hired her, happily hired her. And then Lauren blessed me by staying with me and my research team for her entire four-year career at UNE. During that time, Lauren's research focused on strategies to reduce bacterial biofilm formation, as well as identification and characterization of compounds that can increase antibiotic susceptibility in drug-resistant pathogens like MRSA. Lauren's work has led to multiple research products. For example, she is either lead author or co-author on four external conference presentations, including one that was delivered to the American Society of Microbiology annual conference. Recently, Lauren has become co-author on a manuscript that is currently under review by the Journal of um, Applied Microbiology. Lauren will also be co-author on a second paper that is currently in preparation in my lab. Outside of the research lab, Lauren has been a UNE leader. She was a resident advisor for several years here, and she was the vice president of the Residential Student Life Association. Lauren was a member of the Slackers for Dean Mellon. She was named sophomore scholar, and importantly, she served in an unofficial capacity as sort of an ambassador to the School of Biological Sciences. Lauren joined me and other faculty at numerous recruiting events where she would serve as kind of like the student voice, the student perspective to tell prospective students and their families about our programs, about our amazing pre-health professions advising um, office and all of the resources that UNE offers. And we are so grateful for that. Outside of UNE, Lauren has served her community especially in areas related to healthcare. So Lauren is certified as a behavioral health professional for the state of Maine. She also worked for Maine's Maine Veterans Home in Bangor, as well as the Northern Light Mayo Hospital. During the height of the COVID-19 pandemic, Lauren became trained in um, delivering or administering vaccines, and she joined Northern Light Healthcare's COVID vaccination team, where she helped to vaccinate the public um, during some really, really scary times. What I think might be most impressive is that Lauren did all of that and still managed to finish her degree program a semester early, which broke my heart just a little bit. Um, so she finished her medical biology coursework in December. Since then, she has gotten a job as an R&D scientist at Maine Molecular Quality Control Labs. And in the meantime, she's putting together her applications for medical school. And I fully anticipate that Lauren is gonna get to, to choose which school she wants to go to. And so with that, Lauren, I wanna say congratulations. I wanna say that you earned this, you deserve it and we are so proud of you. And with that, I invite you to please join me in congratulating all of this evening's award winners. We thank you all for coming. Enjoy the rest of your evening.